بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشهد الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين ومن والاهم بصدق وإخلاص إلى يوم الدين الحمد لله It's a great pleasure to be in an enlightened gathering like this today and listening to the nasheed of, of Sham It's amazing that this tradition of praising the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started by the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continues to this day unabated and this is a manifestation of the light which we need to pass on to other people as well. Over 300 of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ used their blessed tongues to bless and praise the Prophet ﷺ. That tradition of teaching and describing the Prophet ﷺ is something today when I was sitting in the presence of our dear Sheikh Habib Ali al Jifri. It really struck me that we're living in a time of darkness. And you only recognize that when you sit in the presence of people of light. You know when you see the moon, and just a couple of days ago, they were saying the astronomical moon is so vivid and large, and they were taking photographs of it. Bring the sun and tell me if the moon remains. Nothing remains. And so when I was sitting with Habib Ali Jaffrey, I was just enveloped in the fact that he was a person who had put his whole life at the service of the Muslim community. And I met him the first time in 1997 in Tarim. And from that time, incessantly and constantly, his only concern has been the concern of the Muslims. The concern of you and your children and your parents and your family. This has been the reason why he's been traveling from the east of the Muslim world to the west of the Christian world trying to propagate something that gives life to people's hearts. And this light is something he inherited from his great-grandfather, the Prophet wasallam. who when he walked, he would say, He would tell his companions, leave aside the space behind me, leave it for the angels. When he serves, Imam Al-Tibi says, when he served his companions, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who were in front of him, looked after every need that they had. That's why the angels were riding, lining up behind him in ranks. Ranks of light behind the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And striving and struggling, khidmah for the creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is what we're here today for. People need light. People need water, no doubt about it. People need food, no doubt about that either. But what they need is the prophetic light. Zubaydah al-Khatun, the wife of Harun al-Rashid, when she heard that the people of Mecca were dying of thirst because of a lack of water, she took it upon herself to build an aqueduct from Ta'if all the way to Mecca al mukarramah That was the intention she had. And when the, when the engineers came to her and the accountants came to her and said to her, you won't be able to afford this. It's too much for you. Too expensive. And she said, if I'm, وَلَوْ كَانَ بِكُلِّ ضَرْبِ فَأْسٍ دِينَارٍ Do it. Carry it out. If they need water, give them water. Even if every strike of the axe costs one gold coin. And that woman herself brought water to thirsty people. When the companions of the Prophet والسلام, arrived in Hebron, where Ibrahim والسلام, is buried, what did they first do? They honored the Prophet Ibrahim والسلام, and built a hostel and a place to feed people who would come to visit his resting place. This is who we are as a community, people who serve, and how Ali Jaffrey and people like him have spent their whole lives in the service of, of humanity, which is why people serve them. But what we are living in today is a time of darkness, as I said before. Intense darkness. The whole of the 
the universe is covered in darkness. And the only thing Ibn Atayla says that brings light back to it is Zulur al haqfi When truth and reality comes, that's what gives light to people and light to people. And this educational institution, Abu Zara, named after the Prophet وسلم, to take some of that blessing and light, it's standing to do exactly that. To connect you with the source of light, the Prophet Because all of our history as a Muslim community is nothing more than describing the lives of scholars and people who spend their life trying to capture knowledge. That's all it is. The Prophet ﷺ said, الدنيا ملعونة The world is cursed. وملعون ما فيها Every single thing in the earth is cursed except ذكر الله وما ولا The remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وعالم ومتعلم And a student and a teacher. Everything other than this that you see in front of you when you walk out of this hall is darkness. The only light that is here is what? Is a student and the teacher. Nothing else. Even if it becomes to you with glistening lights, it's nothing but darkness. Which is why, as I said, our history is a history of students and teachers. Companions and the Prophet wasallam. The companions and the people that sat at their feet. Which is why Luqman al-Hakim, when he gave his son advice, he says, Ya Bunay, Jalis al Ulama, Wazahim Hum Biruk Bate. Oh, my son, you want some advice? That last year, sit with people of knowledge and sit with your knees next to their knees. For indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives life to dead hearts through the light of knowledge in the same way that He brings barren deserts to life through this replacement rain that comes down upon us. So you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Abu Zahra, in this city, in this community, who have been working incessantly to produce this light for you, serve it on you without you having to go and travel. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He blesses them in this. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that every single individual, individual person here strives to help them in this process. And then see the light that comes into your life. See the light that comes into your life if you give in charity to these people. It's an amazing, amazing endeavor that we are able to sit here with people like Sheikh Habib Ali Jafri and come together in a, in a sitting of light, in a majlis where we are thinking of nothing else except passing that chain of light from one generation to another. And that's a blessing for us. In the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is going to lead to people coming out from this city, insha'Allah ta'ala, that will call other peoples to this light as well. People who are not Muslim. People in the streets. Who are lost. Who would grab you in the day of judgment, asking you, why did you not pass this inheritance and light to me? And all these things happen from very, very simple beginnings. I'll finish with a small story of a very famous scholar. Ayyub ibn Sulaim radiallahu anhu, he was one of the students of Imam al-Ghazali, but when he was 10 years old, he was sitting in the, the mosque, and he was trying to recite Surah al-Fatiha. Even the kids that are crying now know Surah al-Fatiha. And he was 10 years old, trying to recite Surah al-Fatiha, and he kept stuttering. And a man sitting next to him, after he, he stuttered and stuttered, he came to him and said, Ya Bunay, is your mother alive? And he says, yes, my mother's alive. He says, go to your mother, ask her to pray for you. And Allah al-ilmu wa al-fahm. Go to your mother and ask her to pray for you, to give you knowledge and wisdom. And he went and, and she prayed. And he left. He went to Baghdad. He sat at the, at the feet of scholars. He sat at the feet of Imam Ghazali. And he left. And he used to get letters from his village coming every, every so often. And he would put them under his pillow. Until the day he left. And when he opened the letters, the day he was leaving, he opens the first letter and it says, Your mother passed away. Come back for the janazah. And he went back to his city. And he sat in the same mosque. And he taught. 
And he, and he gave this knowledge and prophetic guidance out to, out to people. And he was teaching one day, teaching a very difficult book in Philip. And a person sitting at the side said, if only I could understand what he's saying, it's so difficult. I wonder who this great scholar, scholar is. And he heard him. And he knew him. It was the same person who told him 15 years before, go to your mother and ask her to pray for you. And he thought, Abu Fat Abrazi Sulayn, he said, I wish that I went to him and said, if your mother's alive, ask her to pray for you. So you understand what I'm saying. All these things, not from large amounts of money, but simple things that we can do. All the connections that we have are full of barakah. If only we reconnect them. And the people that will tell you how to reconnect are the inheritors of the Prophet And we have in our presence Sheikh Habib Ali Jafri, who really went out this afternoon sitting with him. It completely erased my memory of what I was thinking about talking about today. And they were, they were, Sham was doing the, 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 the nat of Bir um, Mir Ali Shah. At the end of his life, he was a person who was engrossed in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the point you couldn't see. And Sayyidi Habib Ali Jafri radiallahu anhu, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to, to gain from his knowledge and to hear his words. And inshallah, it's a great humbling experience to speak in front of him. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah.